Um, no, I, going out to New Zealand, we don't fear much now because it's like zero. Hello all, as the world was in lockdown as April, there was one country which was celebrating a concert with 50,000 people tightly packed in a stadium without masks. How could that country do it? That country is New Zealand. And today we have with us Mr. Gurvinder Singh, who's right now in New Zealand, who's working there and he's an Indian and he's gonna tell us today how New Zealand could manage a concert when the world was in a lockdown. So how are you today, Mr. Gurvinder? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. I'm so glad you're here. You'll be sharing with us thank you, thank you. important information which we can all learn as to how New Zealand could manage controlling coronavirus infection and so much so that, that they could even manage a concert with so many people. Yeah tightly, you know, placed together in a stadium. Yeah. So were you there at that concert? No, I was not at the concert, but I heard of it. Uh, we have it like every year, these okay. concert go every year. Yeah. So, you know, my first question would be, uh, you know, how is the situation there right now? Are there any lockdowns? Is there any special measure in the city right now? Currently, we are, everything is normal here. We don't have, like we have cases, but everything is in a managed isolation. Okay. So none of the cases come out until the people are cured here. And the vaccination for uh, the frontline people has also started to roll out. Uh, like a few of my friends who are in the frontline healthcare industry, they have got the second shot also last week. One of my friends got. So the vaccines are rolling out for the citizens. Slowly it's going to roll out. Yeah. Uh, we don't know when the vaccines are going to come out for the migrants. But still, yeah, they plan to do it by August or something. Okay, okay. And we, we are, uh, life is totally normal here, but still we take precautions because still people in my managed isolation, maybe there is a chance of one or two cases to come through community, but that also gets taken care of very well here. Wow. You know, that's so, so nice to hear that a country is controlling the yeah. corona infection and people, all the citizens can roam freely on the streets, do all their work yeah. while the world on, in contrast to it, you know, is dealing with strict lockdowns. So, you know, I want to ask you, is it because New Zealand is an isolated island that is the main reason for controlling coronavirus or is it the good administrative efforts of the government? Uh, I would say both because we are a very small island and the main thing why we don't have a hike in cases or nothing is because we don't have people coming from abroad. So last year when coronavirus started, uh, like when we got around a thousand cases approximate, we went into level uh, four lockdown, like total lockdown, you know, one's coming out, nothing. So at that time I was doing my uh, postgraduate diploma. I was uh, in college when we got this uh, lockdown announcement that the lockdown starts from 12 a.m. midnight. So many of my friends, we were like, we have to go and get supplies for the lockdown. We don't know how long it's going to last. So every supermarket was flooded by people, all the shelves empty, everything. So the next day, uh, even in the news, the prime minister Jacinda Ardern announced that uh, people, they are not allowed to do panic buying because the supermarkets are going to be opened. They are going to have controlled entries. People will be counted and sent inside. Like only 100 people go in at a time. And when they come out, the next one go inside. So it was very well managed. Even my friend used to work in a supermarket. So he used to wear the PPE uh, suits and they get sanitized everything. So he used to tell me the inside story that even he was afraid in the initial stages that I have to go to work. and But the 
place they controlled it very nicely in a supermarket so he felt like okay there's no danger but still we think but then he did the job so and even with the administration because they went into strict lockdown like we uh, Auckland is the main place where like all the international flights come in so Auckland had the starting cases everything so i was in nelson so we had level 3 lockdown and Auckland had level 4 so in nelson we were allowed to go outside but still we had curfew and the cops were outside checking like where you're going what, what you're doing at this time where do you live so that was taken care like people they the cops were also so cooperative like if you need help like if you say someone sick at your home i heard like from one of my friend uh, we we used to say as paying guests so the landlord of my friend's house he was like sick so my friend told that he had to get groceries for his landlord so the cops were so nice that they told like if you have any other emergency you can contact one of the cop they they can help you if you need the help so they went to that extent also there so it's very well administered here that's amazing so you you know mentioned so much about the good administra- administration uh, that was there to control the spread of coronavirus now you know with respect to these yeah. lockdowns you spoke about level 3 and level 4 how strict were they yeah. and you know were they like absolutely enforced was it like the government had to strictly enforce it or was it the people who were you know actually taking care of enforcing it so when uh, we were into uh, level 3 lockdown when i was studying and some and some tutors told us that if we if you want we can keep class because our class had only a batch of 14 to 15 students. So some tutors were okay like to have face-to-face classes and still few students and few other professors, they thought like uh, still why we want to take the risk. We can have online class. I had uh, in one semester, uh, like my term goes like two and a half months, two and a half months each term. So for for one term, I had like one class, I had to go to college also, just for uh, like, uh, we have, I had one class a week and total of eight classes per subject. So we used to go alternate weeks. So if you have any assignment submissions, if you have any doubt from the tutor, you can get it, get your ideas from the tutor or anything. But most of it was fully online at that time. And... Okay. I am not sure about the situation, how it was in Auckland, but it was pretty strict because uh, it was level four and it was the main place where all international flights came in. So they they were pretty strict and, and no one was allowed to go into Auckland or come outside from Auckland. So flights were totally closed, domestic, everything closed. I can imagine, you know, all the flights were closed yeah. and probably, you know, uh, even New Zealanders who were outside were probably not allowed to enter New Zealand just so that yeah there is, yes just so that there's absolute you know quarantine and there is no outside cases which come in and you know spread spread in the community in new zealand so you know my next question is regarding vaccinations you already answered that you know the frontline workers have been given vaccine the vaccine so but what about you guys you know what about the general citizens and the migrants when do you see vaccination happening? Um, right now, uh, I'm not totally sure when the vaccines are out, but I hear through the news that they plan to roll it out uh, like by July, September. So from that month, maybe the vaccines will start rolling out for the citizens, like through age groups. So that's the same. And uh, one more thing is we had very less cases in New Zealand and the main thing because being an isolated island and zero transit flights. So we don't have any transit flights through New Zealand. So if any person has to go to some other country, there's only a transit option of Australia or Singapore. New Zealand doesn't have transit flights. So that's also one safe place for us. Okay, okay, okay. So, you know, uh, with the concert happening with 50,000 people, I'm pretty sure that people are really chill about, you know, going out. But I want to ask you because, you know, you have relatives in India, you have your family in India, you have so many of your friends in India. Uh, Looking at what's happening there, does any fear come into your mind when you go outside in New Zealand? 
No, I, going out to New Zealand, we don't fear much uh, because it's really? like it's totally back to normal. But in public transport, still, it uh, the government has told us that you use face masks in public transports. And uh, when I was working, when I started work, I used to take the bus for like three, four months, or uh, five months, approx. And every time I used to wear a mask in the bus, even though when we, we were in level two lockdown, like in the middle after the COVID crisis went, and in the middle, we had a few community cases. When I moved to Auckland, there were a few community cases. So we again went back to level three lockdown. So at that time, uh, public transport was open, but the people were not allowed to go out. Like they were doing work from home. And all uh, even before you get into the bus, the, if you don't wear a mask, the bus driver wouldn't let you in. He would remind you, even if you have a mask in your pocket and you say like, I will go and sit and then wear a mask. No, the bus driver asks you like, do you have a mask? And if you don't have a mask, I have noticed in few buses, even they had disposable mask. It was very safe in that way also. But still looking at the cases in India and having family over there, it is frightening. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Now, you know, one question, you know, when we had this kind of a surge in cases in India, especially in New Delhi, there was a shortage of beds, there was a shortage of medical supplies, there was a shortage of oxygen. So, you know, just asking, you know, God forbid, if there is a surge in New Zealand, is the government prepared? Mm -hmm. Is the medical infrastructure in place? Do you have, you know, makeshift hospitals which can be set up within weeks or days? What do you think about it? I, I, I'm, I'm positive, like, there is a chances of the government to handle the situation pretty well again. Because I have seen the administration is very good, like the way they handled the cases here. So I believe that if there is a sudden surge, we will be able to handle it. Your yeah. perception, which is very important about yeah. the government and your confidence about the government speaks a lot because, you know, you're so yeah. sure that the government is going to take care. You know, that speaks a lot about how your past experiences with the government and the preparations you have done because it's already been one and a half years has been. So it was great. You know, yeah. you, you informed us a lot about a lot of things, especially regarding the administration, about the flight bans, about the levels of the lockdowns and so many other important information life from New Zealand. Now I want to ask you a question of hope. You know, if there is one wish, you know, that could come true, what would it be? As of now, everyone wishes that COVID goes away, but that's a long story. But I wish all people stay safe in India and obey the rules. I see friends, I even my friends, I see them going out during lockdown. I that's uh, pathetic like even when you're in lockdown you just go out that is frightening like you are having a plus and minus chance in that so i just wish everyone stays safe and that's my only wish that family friends everyone just stay safe from corona i can't say that the whole world that corona eradicates at the same time so that Yes, yes, that's a, that's a very noble and a good wish for all your friends and family. And of course, you cannot speak about when the corona is going to end. But you know your yeah. your wish, your wish for your friends, your wish for your family, and wish for all the people back in India is you know very warmly received. So it was great having you in this very important session where you spoke about New Zealand and how it is taking care of its corona spread and the cases. So thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. Thank you.